Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 17th of October. Indian PM Modi launches One Nation, One Fertilizer Scheme, releases 12th installment of funds for farmers. Imran Khan stuns ruling coalition, wins majority of seats in Pakistan by elections. And Sri Lanka starts debt restructuring talks with IMF, China and India. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday launched One Nation, One Fertilizer Scheme, as part of which subsidised urea will be provided to farmers under single brand Bharat. He also inaugurated 600 Kisan Samuriddhi Kendra or welfare centres. PM Modi said India is working towards self-reliance in urea production and this will be a major milestone for the agriculture sector. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday launched a new scheme, Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Urvarak Pariyojana, One Nation, One Fertilizer, under which it is mandatory for companies to market all subsidized fertilizers under a single brand called Bharat. Inaugurating a two-day event at the Indian Agricultural Research Institute in capital New Delhi, PM Modi also inaugurated 600 PM Kisan Samruddhi Kendra or welfare centres, which will cater to a wide variety of needs of the farmers. The Prime Minister said India is working towards Atma Nirbharta or self-reliance in urea production through the use of nano-urea and this will be a major milestone for the agriculture sector in India. He also dispersed the 12th installment of funds for farmers under which the beneficiaries are provided Rs 6,000 per year in three equal installments of Rs 2,000 each. आप में से भी जो किसान यहां बैठे होंगे अगर मोबाइल देखेंगे तो आपके मोबाइल पे खबर आ गई होगी कि 2000 रुपए आपके जमा हो चुके हैं कोई बिचौलिया नहीं कोई कटकी कंपनी नहीं सीधा सीधा मेरे किसान के खाते में पैसा चला जाता है as part of the two-day event, about 300 startups are showcasing their innovation related to precision farming, post-harvest and value-added solutions, including ways to health and agri-logistics, among others. Members of India's Opposition Congress voted to choose the party's chief on Monday, with a veteran loyal to the Gandhi family expected to win. Results are due on Wednesday in the battered party's bid to revamp itself after losing the last two general elections to PM Modi's Bharti Janta Party. Members of India's Opposition Congress Party voted on Monday to elect its first head in nearly 25 years from outside the Nehru Gandhi dynasty of leaders with a veteran loyal to the family expected to win. More than 9,000 eligible Congress party members from across India cast their votes as senior leaders Malikarjun Kharge and Shashi Tharoor face off against each other for the post to succeed interim Congress President Sonia Gandhi. Tharoor cast his vote at the Kerala Congress headquarters at Thiruvananthapuram, while Kharge did so at the Karnataka Congress office in Bengaluru. The Congress presidential election is taking place at a time when the party is grappling with major crises. Results are due on Wednesday in the better party's bid to revamp itself after losing the last two general elections to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party. But of course this is a, uh, an election in the hands of 9,000 party workers around the country and my fate and the future of the Congress party is in their hands. I'm sure that whatever judgment they exercise 
will be in the best interest of the party. Rahul Gandhi was the front runner of his party since December 2017 and resigned in 2019 following the party's defeat in the 2019 general elections. After Rahul Gandhi's resignation, Sonia Gandhi has been serving as the interim party president. Congress has mostly been led by a member of the Gandhi family choosing presidents unanimously for terms of 5 years except in the years 1937, 1950, 1997 and 2000 when elections were held since there was more than one candidate. Pakistan's former prime minister Imran Khan won the majority of seats in by-election on Sunday, building momentum in his campaign to pressure the 6-month-old government into calling an early national vote khan contested seven of eight national assembly seats and has won six the pakistan people's party a member of the ruling coalition took the other two seats pakistan's former prime minister imran khan led pti party on sunday successfully pulled off six out of a total of eight national assembly seats in by polls building momentum in his campaign to pressure the six month old ruling government into calling an early national vote celebrations in the pti camp were in full swing as the party decimated its rival the ruling alliance pakistan democratic movement in the contest to reclaim seats left vacant by pti leaders Khan contested 7 of 8 national assembly seats and won 6. The Pakistan People's Party, a member of the ruling coalition, took the other two seats. PTI Secretary General Asad Umar said that the election results were a referendum and now decision makers should realize their mistake and take Pakistan towards a new election. Awam ke samne election ho raha tha. Dekhne mein to wo ek by election tha kuch halkon ka. लेकिन असल में ये एक रेफरेंडम था क्योंकि कौम को तो पता था खास तौर पे कौमी असम्बली की जो सीटें हैं कि यहाँ पर तो इमरान खान ने जीत के असम्बली के अंदर जाके ओथ भी नहीं लेना इसलिए लोग जो वोट डालने के लिए आ रहे थे वो ये वोट डालने के लिए नहीं आ रहे थे कि उनको अपने कोई हल्के के काम करवाने थे Imran Khan led PTI government was ousted in a no confidence vote in April this year in a high drama process. However, since then the cricketer turned politician has been holding rallies across Pakistan to seek early polls which are attracting large crowds. Residents in Pakistan's Karachi city have said they are fed up of frequent price hikes and the flood situation amid the economic crisis that has added to their woes. The retail price of high demand vegetables and fruits have all surged in the open market annoying the public at large a report Residents in Pakistan's financial capital Karachi have lamented the frequent price hike of all essentials including vegetables and fruits that have soared in the aftermath of floods Consumers said the government has failed to control inflation and regulate prices and blamed the traders for manipulating rates. The retail price of high demand vegetables, tomato and onion have all surged in open market annoying the public at large. Iske bawajood tomatoes 240 rupaye kilo hai. Hari mirchi jaisi jo hai wo 500 rupaye kilo chal rahi hai. Aalu 75 80 rupaye kilo chal raha hai aur pyaaz 150 rupaye kilo chal rahi hai. किस वजह से जब आपने इनको टैक्स फ्री छूट दी हुई है इम्पोर्ट की और पूरी दुनिया से माल आ रहा है तो आपको देखना चाहिए कि मंडी में कौन ऐसा मुजमाना किरदार अदा कर रहा है जिसकी वजह से इतनी महंगाई हुई हुई है और सिर्फ आजकल चटनी रोटी भी और आलू के साथ खा रहे हैं ये समझ लें आप तबाही मचाई हुई है आई डोंट नो क्या होने वाला है आगे क्या Pakistan is currently in the middle of a balance of payment crisis with foreign reserves falling to 7.8 billion US dollars which are barely equal to one month's worth of imports a situation which has been aggravated by a devalued currency and consumer prices rising 27% Finance Minister Ishaq Dar this past weekend said there will be no request for debt restructuring and Pakistan will honor all commitments amid concerns that the country could default on its sovereign debt commitments In news from Sri Lanka Sri Lankan President Ranil Wickremesinghe said on Sunday that the government has started debt restructuring talks with the IMF China and India 
He exuded confidence that if the discussions move forward in a systematic way, the country would tide over its worst economic crisis. Sri Lanka has started debt restructuring talks with the IMF, India and China. President Ranil Vikramsinghe told a gathering on Sunday, excuding confidence that if the discussions move forward in a systematic way, the country would tide over its worst economic crisis. A statement from Vikram Singhe's office said the president said that he spoke to the Chinese finance minister while finance minister Shehan Sema Singhe on Saturday started talks with India on debt restructuring in Washington. He said we are faced with a situation where we are unable to meet interest payments. But I am hopeful that if our talks could be carried forward, we would be able to solve our problems. Vikram Singh has said the funds from the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, the US and the European Union were being used to pay for the island nation's medicines and fertilizer imports. Sri Lanka reached a staff-level agreement with the IMF in late August for a 2.9 billion US dollars rescue package over four years. Its completion hinges on assurance from Sri Lanka's creditors on debt restructuring. Sri Lanka is nearly bankrupt and has suspended repaying its 51 billion US dollars foreign debt, of which it must repay 28 billion dollars by 2027. In news from Nepal, Nepal on Sunday bid farewell to veteran cultural historian Satya Mohan Joshi, who passed away at the age of 103. Known as the Shatabdi Purush or Man of the Century, Joshi was deemed a living history of Nepal as he witnessed the major historical events of the Himalayan nation. Nepal on Sunday bid farewell to veteran cultural expert and historian Satya Mohan Joshi with state honours, who passed away at the age of 103. Three-time Madan Puraskar winner Joshi breathed his last at around 7 a.m. on Sunday at Kist Medical College in Lalitpur. He was diagnosed with chest pneumonia and heart-related problems along with a dengue infection on October 9. The country's political leadership and several other renowned individuals reached the Lalitpur Metropolitan City office, where Joshi's body was brought to pay floral tributes. Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba also laid a national flag on his body. The government announced a day of national mourning in honour of Joshi, who was deemed as the man of the century, a living history of Nepal, as he witnessed the major natural as well as political events of the Himalayan nation. Joshi's body was later on Sunday taken back to Kist Teaching Hospital as per his will, as he wished his body to be donated for research purposes. Satya Mohan Joshi was a household name in Nepal for his contribution to arts and culture, with over 60 books on drama, culture, history and music. In 2019, the Nepal Rashtra Bank issued coins featuring his portrait to commemorate his 100th birthday. Last November, Joshi also became the first person to receive Nepal's electronic passport. As Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights is just around the corner, earthen lamp makers in India's Rajasthan state are hoping for good sales as they resume business after a hiatus of two years due to COVID-19 pandemic. It is believed that millions of lamps were lit when Lord Ram returned to his kingdom Ayodhya after 14 years of exile. Potters in India's northwestern Rajasthan state are hoping good sales of earthen lamps ahead of Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights, as it has brought hopes amid decreasing cases of COVID-19. Despite losing the race of modern cheaper lighting thrills, the traditional lamps known as diyas still find the pride of place at most homes during Diwali. It is believed that millions of lamps were lit when Hindu Lord Ram returned to his kingdom Ayodhya after 14 years of exile and defeating Ravan, the demon king of Lanka. This time it's going to be a lot of work. In the past two years of Corona, it was very low. After that, now it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of marketing. As we are giving it in the rate, it's going to be a lot of work. 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 Considered the most important festival in the Hindu calendar, 
Diwali symbolizes the victory of righteousness over evil and the lifting of spiritual darkness. मांग तो बहुत ज्यादा आ रही है इसकी पर बन रहा नहीं इतना माल इतना माल रात दिन लग रहे तो भी हमारे माल नहीं पूर्ति हो रही इसलिए Diwali is also celebrated in honor of the Hindu goddess of wealth and prosperity Lakshmi It is believed that goddess Lakshmi showers her blessings upon homes that are clean and well lit Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.